here we are. This is Sex Love Psychedelics, and I'm your host, Dr. Kat. Bringing you psychosexual conversations that will leave you intellectually turned on and hungry for more. From what I, from what we've talked about before, you know, we've talked about some of the myths and some of the, um, uh, some of what's being shared in stories about combo. And one question that I get asked from people often are things like, you know, does the combo hurt the frog? Is you know, is the harvesting of it? Is there, um, are we, are the frogs going to become endangered? Are they going to become extinct? And so to give a more of a clear picture, because the two of you have gone down there, you've worked with the tribes, you've developed relationships with them, um, and you ethically source your, the frog serum. Can you explain to people what you've seen or how you understand that process down there? Well, as far as the frogs becoming extinct, um, we never see that as an issue because of how they reproduce. Mm -hmm. So they, as you may remember, but they lay their eggs up in the tree in a pod. And then that pod hangs in the tree until the tadpoles are big enough to protect themselves when that falls into the river, the agapes below. Um, so they are then sort of strong enough to swim away and, and be a little safer than uh, most reptiles are laying there, um, or amphibians, sorry are laying their eggs down below near the river. So the fish and other animals can eat them much more easily. So we don't, because they reproduce so rapidly, this, we don't see any issue around um, the frog becoming extinct. The, as far as how they um, harvest the medicine from the frog, what it is, is it's a secretion that comes out of the, out of the pores of the skin. So it is, they call it milking and they milk them and they take this secretion and um, it's scraped off by a, uh, with a stick. Now there's many ways that people talk about how they get the, the frog to excrete that secretion. Um, and then there's some controversy probably around that as well, because some of them will say that they, they will tickle the frog's feet. We've heard that they will irritate the frog. Um, and you know, from our perspective, that might seem as not friendly to the frog, but the tribes have been doing something like this for thousands of years. So it's, uh, it's quite an interesting balance for us to think that we should go around um, sort of judging their process, you know, like white man coming into jungle telling tribe, this is how you should harvest your medicine is a, an interesting conversation now with the way the, the world is. Um, so that's something that we, we don't really stick our nose in so much around. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's something that they've been doing for thousands of years, the way they do it. Um, Jenny, do you have anything to add as far as that goes, the harvesting? I think this is a really complex question because we, we only have to have trust that they're harvesting in a way that we would be comfortable with. You know, we ask them questions and they tell us. And so we have to then have trust that they're, that that's the way it's actually happening, but we're not there watching all the time. Um, and I think there will be different tribes that may do it differently. Mm -hmm. Some, sure. And so it's a really difficult question to answer. And, you know, I always say it would probably take two months or maybe two years to answer that question. And the reason I think it would take that long, it would probably take me that long to have the growth and development with my, in myself to be able to answer the question um, in a proper manner based on the totality of life. Mm -hmm. So all we can do in the meantime is, is that we can ask the questions, which we do. Mm -hmm. We do go down. Sometimes we have people go down and and then trust that they're they're doing what they say. Mm -hmm. They're definitely a di going to be a different culture than our culture, and how they look at things will be different than the way we look at it. You know, like some cultures eat dogs as just a staple for their diet, which we're horrified by that. 
but who are we to say that their culture is incorrect? Um, it's only incorrect in our eyes. So I don't know, I, I mean, this is a question that we talk about a lot and we, um, Steve and I, because we want to give, we don't want to like give false information, mm -hmm. but we also, um, we don't want to make judgment also to, to any, any of the tribes uh, or to their culture. And, um, and so we, we try to be as forthright as we can be around it. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, we do have to just trust that it's happening the way it's, it's happening. Yeah. And there's a process of, uh, you know, you, like what you explained, and, and I think this is really important to highlight, ask questions. You know, yes, there is a level of trust. There's only so much that we can, and we can't make somebody tell us <laughs> what they're doing. And um, we do have to trust, but there's also, you go through a process of asking questions. You've gone down there, you've developed these relationships. You know that they don't over harvest. You've asked, you know, you've asked these questions and, and that's something I would encourage for anybody to do, whether you're, whether you're vetting a, a facilitator, you know, to work with and go on those journeys with you, or you are understanding the, the lineage of a medicine, you know, where, or a uh, psychedelic or, or combo excretion or whatever it is, you know, do you know where it's coming from? Do you know where it's sourcing? I think for me, that creates a, um, it creates a respect, but it also anchors you into, into what you're consuming or what you're bringing into yourself as, um, as versus us just blindly accepting, you know, somebody's drug on the street and hoping that it doesn't have fentanyl and you know, like <laughs> across the board, can we get into this practice of asking questions? Well, that was fun. Thanks for tuning in lovers. And if you want to experience more ecstasy and sexual liberation, head over to sexlovepsychedelics.com and learn about how you can join me for any one of my online or live events. And while you're there, grab my free guide on sex and psychedelics. Remember, this podcast is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Please contact your healthcare provider and local law before pursuing any of the products or psychedelics discussed. And one final note here, I make this show specifically for you. If you're loving the show, then be sure to leave me a review in iTunes or Spotify to let me know. Happy to be here and happy to serve. I'll see you next time on Sex Love Psychedelics.